Kevin Sherman, and thank you for the committee for inviting me for such uh, elegant meeting. Our case today is a little bit lengthy story that started on May 2004, when this 50 years old obese female with body mass index of 39 presented to our hospital complaining of short, short exertion, shortness of breath, and chest discomfort. She is known to have multiple risk factors, including diabetes, hypertension, and dyslipidemia. She's also had a strong family history of sudden cardiac deaths, as two of her brothers died suddenly at the age of 40, and one of her sisters died at the age of 45. The patient was admitted to a telemetry ward in our hospital. Her clinical examination and lab tests were, showed no abnormality. ECG was normal. Her transthoracic echo showed preserved LV systolic function, and there was suspected, suspected LV apical thrombus versus non LV non-convection. Non when we took more views, we can detect the LV non-convection with apical, heavy apical trabeculation, which was also documented uh, by LV uh, contrast injection. This is the heavy apical trabeculation, which uh, goes with the LV non-convection. And here we can appreciate the finger-like shape which present in the apical area of the LV. The vitamin stress test was done for the patient and showed reversible ischemia in her LA territory. And while her stay on the uh, telemetry ward, she had developed an attack of non-sustained VT. On the next day, coronary angiography was done and showed two vessel disease was 90% lesion, LAD and remus intermedius. Both of them were successfully managed by BCI with very good angiographic results. The patient kept for a few days in our uh, hospital. However, before discharge, she developed another attack of non-sustained VT. So in summary, this is an elderly female with multiple risk factor, preserved LV function, LV non-convection, a strong positive family history of sudden cardiac death, and the current non-sustained VT. However, she's she has ischemic heart disease, which just revascularized. So do we think that she's really need for AICD insertion? At that time, we don't have elective physiologist in our center, so we referred her to another center for second opinion. The elective physiologist decided to insert an AICD, which was inserted in June 2004. And here uh, we can see the AICD. Over the next seven years, she had a recurrent uh, hospital admission to our hospital complaining of non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. Actually, she admitted four times. Three of them were managed by BCI, and the fourth one, she, we referred her for a cardiac surgery. Her work on angiography by BASGAF times three were done successfully. However, during the whole this period, she didn't experience any single ICD shock. In 2012, during her regular follow-up, we referred her for a check of the ICD, which is eight years old now. So the active officer said it's the battery need to be replaced. So eight years with no single shock, do we really need to replace the battery? The battery was replaced by the active surgeon. However, two weeks later, unfortunately, the patient presented back to the hospital with complaining of pocket infection. She was kept on full medical treatment and antibiotic and strong antibiotic, yet it was ineffective treatment. So after one month, the battery was removed. However, the patient kept coming and going for the next two years, complaining of tiny discharge infrequently coming from the rocket site. We consulted again her elective physiologist regarding this, so he planned for lead extraction. We referred her to the hospital, where transthoracic echo and transfusional echo were done for her for her assessment of ICD lead, and we, they found that there is a large mass attached to the uh, ventricular lead of the ICD. This also was confirmed by the TE. So the patient was kept on medical treatment, including antibiotic and anticoagulant, for a few weeks, and the TE was repeated after that. But the mass is still there, even it's getting bigger. bigger. So the heart team decided to remove the lead, to do lead extraction surgically. The patient was taken to the OR for surgical lead extraction on 29th of January 2015. 
the ectoid was, was surgically removed with the support of cardiopulmonary bypass. However, the uh, intraoperative TE detected this gush of air, which could be seen in the pulmonary artery, the aorta, and even the SVC. It also detected on the LV and left atrium and in the aorta. Since then, the patient is comatosed and decelerated. So now we're asking again the, our expert, do we properly manage this patient regarding her insertion and removal of the ICD? And is the ICD is really always life-saving? Thank you. <laughs>